Federalists. The Federalist Party truly began in the 1790s, built around the ideas of Alexander Hamilton, the Secretary of Treasury. These ideas first began to clash with others during the Constitutional Convention of 1787, and this clash marks the origin of the political party system. Through the early 90s, a nationwide coalition began to form, structured around the idea of a strong national government with an emphasis on financial stability. Merchants and bankers favored these ideals, along with businessmen and inhabitants of the New England region. Federalists wanted the power in government to stay nationally oriented and not be distributed as much among the states. To an extent, this threatened the rights of individual citizens, and it also gave a lot of power to the president. Though opposing ideas existed and also merited significant support and the establishment of a party, the Federalist one was the first of its kind and remained in complete control of the government until 1801. Evolution of the Party and Famous Members the Federalist Party originated around the ideology of strong, centralized government. This was their platform until the 1790s when it widened with the approval of Jay's Treaty, the creation of a central bank, and the support for neutrality in the conflict between Britain and France. Also at this time, the Federalist Party began to support nationalistic ideals with the Alien and Sedition Acts. The Federalist Party had many influential and famous members. Obviously, Alexander Hamilton played a significant role, as the party's secondary name was the Hamiltonians, but many other individuals within the party were historically essential. John Marshall, the first Chief Justice, made decisions in influential court cases such as Gibbons v. Ogden and Marbury v. Madison, which gave the Supreme Court a reason to exist. John Adams was president from 1797 to 1801 and passed unpopular bills such as the Alien and Sedition Acts. This trend of lacking popular support was one that haunted the Federalist Party for its entire lifetime, eventually causing its demise. The Federalist Party was practically extinct by 1817, and their failure is mainly attributed to the opposing skill of the Republican Party and their own inability to organize politically. There were simply too many divisions within the party itself, namely those between the supporters of Alexander Hamilton versus those of Adams, a Republican. The Role of the Party Early on, the Federalists drew support from those who wished to strengthen national power over that of the states. This national power created significant trends, changes, and long-lasting impacts. The party laid the foundation for a national economy, created a national judicial system, and formulated principles of foreign policy. Until its defeat in the presidential election of 1800, the Federalist Party was an elitist one with leaders that scorned democracy, widespread suffrage, and open elections. Their greatest support and strength lay in Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Delaware, ergo assuming the aspects of a sectional minority. This mindset led to the Federalist opposition to Jefferson's Louisiana Purchase of 1803. The party claimed it was too costly and a threat to northern influence in government. The party was losing support and almost died out after the death of Alexander Hamilton, but regained its strength with widespread opposition to Thomas Jefferson's ill-conceived embargo of 1807. In the 1808 presidential election, the party ran against Madison. The Federalist candidate carried Delaware, parts of Maryland and North Carolina, and most all of New England, excluding Vermont. The declaration of war against Great Britain in 1812 brought the Federalists the support of New York, New Jersey, and more of Maryland. Even with the inclusion of these states, there wasn't enough popular support to elect the Federalist candidate. The party remained slightly present in these states up until 1828, when they completely died out. The Federalists played an important role in history, not only in terms of their role in specific events, but in the actual establishment of political parties themselves. They mark the time when contrasting ideals manifested into representative powers, which epitomizes democracy itself.